Okay, this third part of our example of a frame and its shear and moment diagrams and its qualitative deflected shape. We've already found what the shear and moment diagram is here. We've got that in the middle. That's in response to this set of distributed loads up at the top. We were given what the reaction values were and then we went and determined this in, the, in part two. Now we want to get the qualitative deflected shape. And remember, four keys here. We need to comply with moment curvature requirements. Smiley face, frowny face, right? Positive, negative moment. We have to comply with boundary conditions. What happens here at the supports? We have to comply with special conditions and more generally continuity as those aspects are uh, developed and we'll talk about that. And then we're going to assume that axial deformations of the individual members are negligible. They're certainly of a much smaller order than flexural um, deformations are. So let's take a close look here at what we've got. I'm going to start the drawing with the fixed end. It's the most constrained portion of the whole system. Right? And I come up and I look and remember our sign convention was for that column there was the smiley face or positive. There it is for that beam and over here too. Now in the American Designer Sign Convention we don't really care about positive and negative because we're just drawing it on the compression side of the member. So this tells me that oh this thing has to curve oh, oh this is the compression side which means that big moment bigger curvature that means smaller radius of curvature. I'm going to get out my French curve and I try not to make this too exaggerated because you can create some difficult challenges in drawing this if you get too much deformation going on. But a fixed end has no rotation. So when I lay that French curve in, I need to be tangent here to the original undisplaced position. And notice I took it all the way up to the top of the column because this column can't shorten, it has to slide sideways. And if that is then delta. Uh, B up at the top end, then that's going to, for that beam not to shorten, it has to slide exactly the same amount over here at E will be equal to that delta B, that same amount. Now the, the beam and column were framed in at right angles, and so in the displaced position of that joint, I need to repeat that right angle. So I'll come in, lay it in tangent, and I can just get it going just slightly, and that way I know where the tangent is at. Right? And so it's not a bad idea to get extended tangents in here. Here's the rotation that has happened at that joint, and that rotation with this rigid joint is also then the same amount theta b. Right? And now, you know, it's not a bad idea to even sketch in where that tangent would go because it's going to serve as a construction basis for this initial part because in that, that little first part here that zero looks like I kind of screwed up the scale here there we go that should be five feet over to the zero moment that's where the hinge was located I drew it to the wrong spot yeah, that's, that's a lot better that's where our, effectively our hinge is located and we need to go over let's see that's one two three little boxes so one one two three little boxes so that's roughly where the hinge is at, and we got nothing but negative moment there. So we've got to again lay that in tangent and put a little frowny face in there. And then we've got the hinge. Now in that next segment, we've got nothing but positive or smiley face moments between the two hinges. Now I don't know how much the hinge on the right displaces down. It's not going to necessarily be the same as the other one. It started off at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right there. It comes over, we said, by, uh, let's see, comes over by 1. I think my scale is going to be off just a little bit qualitatively. But let's say it started here, it's going to come over by delta B, the exact same amount. And I'm going to pop it in right about there. Joint uh, E ends up way over here, right? It slid over by the same amount as what B did, okay, and just laying out where all the connecting pieces are going to have to be, right? Now that hinge allows a break and slope, so I don't want to end up with then having continuity in slope D, because the hinge creates a discontinuity in slope, 
And so let's just kind of lay that out. That's going to shoot underneath point E. That's, I guess that's good. Um, we have to get in there somehow. A little negative frowny face moment. Now that's a little kind of tricky to figure out how to get that in there. But it maybe might look like something like maybe like this. Now you might notice I'm kind of fudging around trying to figure out how I want to do this. What I'm really doing is taking a look at head because I know that I need to have a right angle up here for the joint. And when I form that right angle, it can't pass exactly through that pin because I'm supposed to have smiley face here. And it looks like it's a very gentle one. It really should actually be sort of a symmetric kind of view here. Looks like I might have gotten my joint just rotated just a little bit too much. Um, it's hard to get that in there. It's pretty subtle. And that's part of the challenge of getting these in there right. But you try to get the general shape in there correct. And we have done that um, pretty close. You could quibble. There's some non-zero rotation that has happened uh, here at the joint. Very small. It doesn't have to be the same as what we had from theta b. There's nothing that says those two are going to be the same. So notice, because of the way the supports are set up, this actually sways to the right. That's the only way to get a deflected shape in there that is consistent with the moment diagram. And those keys, moment curvature, smiley face, frowny face, boundary conditions. We have no displacements at all at the fixed. We have a no translations at the pin support, but we do have a rotation. Special conditions, we have a uh, break in the slope at the two hinges. They do move down. Um, and we have no axial deformations implied in our deflected shape.